Diddy's shocking history of alleged violence against those who don't bend to his will. Last week, a lawsuit threatened to expose the violent, hidden world of Sean Combs after decades of stories and rumors about his violent behavior. On Thursday, the hip-hop mogul's former girlfriend, R&B singer Cassie, real name, Nay Cassandra Ventura, accused him of rape and abuse in a bombshell lawsuit. The lawsuit was then settled Friday, just 24 hours after it was filed, as Cassie said. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control, end quote. Combs attorney insisted the settlement was no way an admission of wrongdoing. However, comma, a well-placed industry source believes the suit may have pierced the seemingly impenetrable fortress around Teflon Puffy. Quote, this feels like the tip of the iceberg to me with Diddy and the rumblings from people in the music industry are pretty much we knew, but we were scared to talk about it, end quote. A day after the settlement was announced, the hashtag Surviving Diddy was trending on X with a number of people predicting that more women will come forward with accusations against Combs. Everyone in the music industry knows about Diddy's insidious past, the source said. I think many were shocked at the level of detail exposed via Cassie, but mostly shocked it's taken this long to come out. After the suit was made public, singer Aubrey O'Day, who was in Puffy protege group, Danity Kane, wrote on Instagram, been trying to tell y'all for years. In the lawsuit, Cassie, age 37, accused her ex of allegedly repeatedly graping her, physically abusing her, and forcing her to have seg with male prostitutes as he watched and masturbated in what he called a freak off. The two dated from 2007 to 2018. Combs, the lawsuit claimed, was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat her so savagely that she needed to hole up in hotels for weeks at a time to recover privately. Cassie claims she has been diagnosed with memory loss, allegedly linked to Combs having kept her compliant with opiates and alcohol, leading to substance abuse problems. Upon learning that Cassie had a fling with rapper Kid Cudi while she and Combs were on the outs, she alleged that Combs may have blown up Kid Cudi's car. Raffman said Combs denied all the allegations. In 2009, Combs allegedly pressured Cassie to get breast implants, then demanded the next day that celebrity surgeon Dr. Frank Ryan remove them because they were too big. Despite warnings, it could be harmful to do so. But Diddy was like, no, call who you need to call. They've got to come out, a source told the Daily Mail. Cassie's attorney declined to further discuss the case or say if he is working with any other potential accusers. But it's hardly the first time Combs has been affiliated with violence. In December of 1991, when Combs was 22 and an intern at Uptown Records, the tone was set for some of the violence that would follow him throughout his career when a charity basketball game he was overseeing with rapper Heavy D at a City University of New York gym in Harlem turned into a stampede that unalived nine people. A judge ruled that Combs and Heavy D, whose real name is Dwight Myers, were responsible for the tragedy. Though the ruling had no legal effect on Combs or Myers, Combs later settled with at least one injured survivor. It remains clear that plaintiff Nicole Levy's case is without merit. Combs' lawyer said at the time, he burst on the hip hop scene in the mid 90s when it was dominated by the deadly feud between East and West Coast artists. Reaching a tragic peak with the 1996 murder of Tupac Shakur, followed by the murder of Notorious B.I.G. six months later. According to Gene Deal, who was Combs' bodyguard at the time, Combs, who was Biggie's best friend and signed to his Bad Boy Entertainment record label, could have ended up dead in the drive-by shooting that killed Biggie. 
I went because I knew that somebody was going to be terminated that night. I did everything in my power to stop it from being Puff. And it wasn't Puff. The people that was bodyguarding Big didn't stop it from being Big. Deal told the art of dialogue earlier this year. In 1999, Combs apparently acted like a mafioso when he didn't get his way, assaulting then president of Interscope Records, Steve Stout, with a chair, a telephone, and a champagne bottle, according to prosecutors. Combs had wanted to cut a scene from a video in which he was featured, Hate Me Now by Nas, fearing it was blasphemous. But the original assault charge was dismissed by prosecutors who accepted Combs' guilty plea to a lesser charge of harassment and was sentenced to one day of anger management. As the Post wrote at the time, a violation no more serious than if Combs had merely yelled at Stout on the street. The wheels of friendship the Post wrote in 1999, reportedly re-greased with a half a million dollar payment from Combs to Stout. That same year, Combs was at Club New York in Times Square with his then girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, and rap protege, Shine, when a shooting erupted. Later that night, the group's car were stopped by cops and they were charged with criminal possession of a weapon and possession of stolen property. All three were arrested, though Lopez was released after a reported 14 hours. Both Shine and Combs were charged in connection with the incident. Combs, whose legal team included O.J. Simpson's future attorney, Johnny Cochran, skated. Shine, who did not have that same lawyer, was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Combs' driver at the time, Wardell Fenderson, testified that he'd been warned not to take the job because Combs was very arrogant, demanding, hot-tempered, and had acquaintances of a bad nature. Puff Daddy, as he was known then, was found not guilty and changed his name to P. Diddy. He eventually lost Lopez for good as the couple announced their split on Valentine's Day 2001. In an interview with Vibe magazine in 2003, Lopez said this is the first time she's ever been in a relationship with a man who wasn't faithful. Quote, I was in a relationship with Puffy where I was totally crying, crazy and going nuts. It really took my whole life in a tailspin, she said. I never caught him, but I just knew. Lopez says that she and Combs split so often that he didn't believe it when she left him for good on February of 01. I had to think. Do I want to be home with kids in 10 years wondering where somebody is at 3 in the morning? Also in 1999, Detroit talk show host Rogelio Miles alleged that Combs and his entourage assaulted him after he asked about rumors linking the mogul to Biggie's death. On the stand, asked by his attorney, what happened? Combs responded, I just remember ending the interview. The jury ruled in favor of Combs a decision upheld even on appeal. In 04, New York Magazine profile reported that baby fat designer Kimora Lee Simmons said something to Combs and he threatened to hit her. She says, I was pregnant, the moron, said Simmons. According to the story, Combs eventually got down on his knees in public to apologize to Simmons. In addition to Cassie's claims that Combs threatened to blow up Kid Cudi's car, the two rappers got into a 2012 fight at a Hollywood club. Cassie's lawsuit alleged Combs told Cassie that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway, the suit claims. A spokesman for Kid Cudi told the New York Times, this is all true. Three years later, Combs was arrested on suspicion of assaulting his sons, Justin's UCLA football coach. That's Sean Diddy Combs being escorted from a police car in handcuffs. The 45-year-old music mogul was charged with assault with a deadly weapon after allegedly swinging a kettlebell like this at UCLA's assistant football coach's head. The confrontation took place between Combs and Sal Alosi, who coaches Combs' 21-year-old son, Justin, a defensive back on the team. Police say Combs lost his temper because he thought the coach was being hard on Justin during practice. No one 
one was seriously injured. Alosi made headlines in 2010 when he was a coach with the Jets and was caught on camera tripping a Miami Dolphins player. The Los Angeles District Attorney's Office decided not to pursue felony assault charges. Then a woman who worked as a private chef for Combs filed a sexual harassment lawsuit alleging that she was forced to serve him post-SAG meals while he was naked. She also accused him of not paying her for overtime. The suit was quietly settled in 2019. At the time, a rep for Combs told TMZ, this is a frivolous lawsuit by a disgruntled ex-employee who was fired for cause, end quote. At Clive Davis's 2021 pre-Grammy gala, Diddy decided to call out Recording Academy for a lack of acknowledgement and appreciation of rap and R&B categories. However, former Bad Boy star Mace reported on Instagram, your past business practices knowingly has continued purposely starving your artists and being extremely unfair to the very same artists that helped you obtain that award for an iconic bad boy label. People feel that Sean screwed people over. Rappers and hip hop talent view him having taken advantage of them. He was seen as the king and there is a perception that he badly treated the princes and princesses of the next generation. This girl came out from 1991 saying Diddy did something to her. A California woman has accused Sean Diddy Combs of allegedly drugging and assaulting her when she was a college student in 1991. The woman, Joy Dickerson Neal, also accused the rapper of recording the assault and showing it to his friends. According to the complaint, Combs asked her out for chicken and waffles and then drove her to his music studio. She believes that he drugged her during the meal as, when she attempted to exit the car, her legs felt rubbery and she was unable to stand. This follows another lawsuit filed by R&B singer Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, stating that Combs trapped her in a cycle of abuse. Both cases were brought under the Adult Survivors Act a New York law that grants victims of sexual abuse a year to file a civil lawsuit. Mr. Combs never assaulted her, an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head, said a spokesperson for Combs in a statement. That's why all of these things are coming out. I'm not saying that means it's true or it's false. I'm just letting everybody know what's behind that influx. Four hours after Cassie filed an explosive lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of DV, SA, and trafficking, they settled the suit for an undisclosed amount. However, this just made Diddy look even more guilty because after Cassie filed, Diddy's lawyer publicly accused her of trying to blackmail Diddy. And yet, just hours later, Diddy suddenly decided to pay up? See, Diddy literally never pays anyone. It took him over 30 years to pay his former artists, so there's definitely more here than meets the eye. 
He didn't put any effort to clear his name, and instead, he immediately put a lid on Cassie's lawsuit, which can only mean one thing. There has to be more that he's hiding. Now, something that a lot of people were confused about is why Cassie agreed to settle. Well, she didn't have any other option. She filed a civil lawsuit, which means settlement was the only possible outcome. Only the government, aka a prosecutor, can file cases in criminal court, so it's up to them to open a criminal investigation against Diddy. But this was actually a really smart move on Cassie's part because her lawyers used trafficking as the foundation of her lawsuit, which means they left the door wide open for criminal and federal charges to be brought against Diddy. It was also smart that Cassie refused to settle privately with Diddy before filing a lawsuit because by making it public, she protected herself and her family. Plus, for a high-profile lawyer to have even touched this case means Cassie's evidence was real and compelling. Now, speaking of evidence, many things are starting to surface online, including this video of Cassie curled up on the floor under a blanket while Diddy taunts her. What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say when you put your girl on the snap. Also, Cassie's old selfie recently resurfaced, showing her with a busted lip and trauma to her head. Cassie shared this photo in 2014 during a trip to Dubai with Diddy, and at that time, blogs reported she had an accident while riding an ATV. But this isn't what her face would look like after an ATV accident. Instead, it looks like one of the incidents she describes in her lawsuit. Now, a lot of people are saying this story is scarily similar to what happened to Kim Porter, Diddy's ex-girlfriend who died under mysterious circumstances in 2018. To give you some context, Diddy and Kim dated on and off from 1994 to 2007, and during one of their splits, Kim started seeing Shakir Stewart, who worked at Def Jam. Diddy reportedly became furious after learning about Kim and Shakir, which led to a heated argument during which Kim sustained a broken nose. Most of the reports about this incident have been scrubbed from the internet. However, there is one article published in 2005 that references the altercation, saying that Kim was left with a broken nose after the couple argued on Combs' yacht in Saint-Tropez. The article states that Combs flew in a specialist plastic surgeon from Geneva after the accident, and that Porter has since claimed that she hurt her face after she banged her nose on the table. But it gets even more disturbing from here. On November 1st, 2008, Shakir Stewart was found dead in his Atlanta home, having suffered a gunshot wound. According to the official ruling, he took his own life. However, it didn't take long before rumors started circulating there was foul play involved. People started pointing fingers at Diddy, and one source confirmed to media takeout that Diddy had previously beaten up Shakir badly. The source said, Kim was seeing Shakir and Diddy found out and he went ape. He tracked Shakir down to his hotel. Then, Diddy went up there without security and beat him to a bloody pulp. Now, as for Kim, she passed away on November 15, 2018, supposedly from complications of pneumonia. However, she was just 47 years old, and there's no evidence she had any underlying conditions. A shocked and devastated Diddy spotted at the home where his ex suddenly and mysteriously died. Her good friend Kimora Lee Simmons appearing inconsolable at the house, 47-year-old Porter's body found after a desperate call to 911. EMS 14, respond with engine 76 on scene of the cardiac arrest. Of course, many people thought this was highly suspicious, and one of them was Kim's ex-husband, Al B. Schur. In July 2020, Al shared a since-deleted video of himself and wrote, I just found this footage from the morning I learned of Kim Porter's murder and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. I do know very clearly that Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. Al B also added the hashtag, don't let the love songs fool you, seemingly referencing Diddy's tributes to Kim. And then in November 2021, Al B posted a throwback photo with Kim and claimed she told him she was running and he advised her to call the FBI. Al B also added in the comments, you would never believe what she went through. And get this, just months after he posted this, Al B was hospitalized with multiple organ failure and spent two months in a coma. He managed to pull through, however, he's been very silent since then and stopped mentioning Kim in public. However, Jaguar Wright is not staying silent, and back Start in December, by. she told Real Life Productions that Kim's initial autopsy showed
And the timeline is definitely interesting because Kim died just weeks after Cassie and Diddy broke up in October 2018. So maybe Kim told Cassie something in their last conversation that made her finally leave Diddy for good. It's also interesting that Cassie filed her lawsuit on November 16th and Kim died on November 15th. It's almost like Cassie was sending a message about that conversation she had with Kim. Oh, and by the way, the same day Diddy settled the lawsuit with Cassie, Kim Porter's Wikipedia page disappeared. It looks like Diddy's PR team is working at overtime, but it might be too late because the floodgates are open and fans are saying Diddy's final downfall is only a matter of time at this point. One fan said Cassie came out to protect herself. We all saw what happened to Kim Porter. She made it public so he couldn't do his evil Machiavelli shit. The floodgates are now open. We suspected for years. Diddy is not coming back from this. Good. Effing weirdo. And another fan wrote, Diddy knows his time is coming. He's been getting away with stuff for too long. Kim is probably smiling down on Cassie, finally speaking out. But what are your thoughts on Jaguar Wright saying Diddy poisoned Kim? And do you think Cassie knows how Kim really died? Young Dolph transitioned in November. Brother Panic transitioned in November. Takeoff transitioned in November. Mo3 transitioned in November. And Lil Boosie was shot and almost died November 17, 2020. So this whole thing with Kim Porter and them under this harvest moon is no strange coincidence. Well, November is the month of death. All Saints Day, All Souls Day. King Vaughn, thank you. They harvested him in November as well. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before Paws was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle. At first we were friends, then became lovers. You was more than my girl, we was like brothers. All night we would play fight undercovers. What the fuck did Puff just say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expect it. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party and it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited than a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms and you fuck around and look in the raw room and shit. Nick, come here, come here. Is that two niggas kissing? Is one of them niggas Professor Ovi? I used to wait outside a Turkish baths for them. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? No, I don't. That's where a lot of gay men meet and they all take hot baths together. That's a lot of sh that these guys get into when they start having certain meetings with certain people and they meet them at the Turkish bath in those type of situations where they're comfortable at. So that's why, you know, twice, sometimes three times a week. Wow. Me and the driver be outside. He'll run into the Turkish bath. Diddy had this thing called Flavor Camp, and that's where he raised Usher at. Usher did the same thing to Justin Bieber. But remember, Andre Harrell was the one who did this to Diddy in the beginning. The relationship between Diddy and Andre Harrell was no different than making the band. I remember one time I gave him a tape to run an errand, mm -hmm. and it was 10 blocks away. I picked up the phone to take a business call. Before I could hang up the phone, Puff came through the door with his tie flying like this. <laughs> Saying, what else can I do? I said, how did you how did you get there so fast? He said, I ran in, I ran back. I gotta get up every day and do a bunch of that I don't wanna do. I gotta bite my tongue and I gotta do it with a smile on my face. Yo, it's called making the bitch, not making the bad. This right here is the way I run my If y'all bucking on this little right here, I definitely don't wanna with y'all. We was just on the tip like you was trying to put us out to like a bitch or something like The way that Diddy made making the band walk to get the cheesecake, Andre Harrell used to have Diddy washing his car. That's on record. Like, I made that nigga go out there and just do shit. Like, listen, go take a number two and keep the door open and don't wipe. How did he know about them humiliation rituals? Because them jokes was done on him. Everybody's telling Diddy, stop playing and just come out of the closet, bro. Andre Harrell owned it. Andre was like, listen, I like men's.
the Biggie character is processed and a part of Biggie's alter ego is a second generation heavy D. Go back and watch any heavy D video and it looks like the hypnotized video. Puffy told you he was the king of remixes. Biggie's a remix of heavy D and this other guy from Mississippi. Did Biggie steal his image and flow? <laughs> Jets and stuff. Now, honey's play me close like butter play toast from the Mississippi down to the East Coast. It was like funny, and then, and then when Big say down the Mississippi up to the East Coast, now you look at shit like that, be like, yo, wow. <laughs> Remember, Puffy was raised under Andre Harrell. The only reason Andre Harrell is who he is is Andre Harrell created New Jack Swing along with Pharrell's mentor, Teddy Riley. Andre Harrell teamed up with Teddy Riley and created New Jack Swing. This is the first time you're going to see the blending of R&B and hip hop. Remember, Puffy brought you Mary J. Puffy, who was hitting Mary, made Mary do a song with Method Man. You're going to see Toto and Biggie. This is the birth of New Jack Swing. Remember Jodeci did that song with Wu-Tang? That's New Jack Swing. ODB and Mariah Carey. Me and Mariah go back like babies with pacifiers. Right. That was New Jack Swing. Family, it is I, your humble brother Crumb. I want to just take a real quick moment, put some respect in your name. Frank White, I greatly appreciate your support. Tanya, I greatly appreciate your support. Simon, I see you, I love you, I appreciate you. Wanda is much love. There are some others, but they've asked not to have their name. So I greatly appreciate anybody who has taken the dollar challenge. But you know, family, I am not Pastor Porkchop or Reverend Chicken Wing. So it's not about the money. If you want to support, you can just simply smash that like button, family. Also, comment, family. Let us know what you think. Is Diddy going down? I'm going down, Diddy. I'm joking, don't make me, don't get me started. But also family, if you're a noob, if you're a neophyte, if you are an initiate and this is your first time and you watch the whole video, well, guess what family? Now you are a master student. You have been initiated. So smash that subscribe button. With that said family, I'm your humble brother Crumb and I wanna leave you the exact same way that I came to you. You are now watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. You are watching Crumb TV. This is Prema Asset in Los Angeles, Lemur Park, and you are now watching 